What kind of heaven, Father? We thank you, Lord, with children in heaven for your wonderful blessing. Thank you for having the opportunity to come back into your presence. Open our hearts and minds, Lord, receive the message you've given us. And let us continue by, walk by the way, Lord. We pray and hope that our hearts do not burn within us as we walk by the way. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The service that did not did not our heart burns as we walk by the way and talk with him. Brothers and sisters, good afternoon and holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. I pray that everybody had a good lunch and eat, didn't eat oh, too much. I didn't yeah. eat. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. So um Michelle gonna get a, a help to live in a second and they're gonna go right in us in a right in um Bible study. Knowing that she owed God. Praise God. Praise knowing that you owe God about 15 minutes. Just want to remind you. Amen. No, and I this this will be historically short by God's grace. Um Holy Sabbath once again, everyone. Um for those who may be hearing this for the first time, our healthy living segments are God's prescription for healthy living. And our topic for today is a con the conclusion on the topic, atherosclerosis. And I'm going to read um, just a few very eye-opening remedies for atherosclerosis, which is, um, we learn in our books and our natural remedies encyclopedias on page 523 is um, plaque development inside the artery wall that causes the wall to narrow and limits blood flow. But before we begin on natural those natural remedies, can anyone tell us what are the eight laws of health? in no particular order. What are the eight laws of health? And while you're thinking, the they can what? be found in, oh, go ahead, Brother Ken. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess her name. My abstemiousness, pure water, clean air. No. I think it's a more, I'm not looking. Somebody help him out. Uh, Exercise, exercise, proper diet, rest, exercise, proper diet, water, trusting God. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank, thank you both. Praise God. And um, I always like to add that um, we know that there is a relationship between sin and sickness that traces all the way back to the Garden of Eden to our first parents. Um, but however, Jesus is the second Adam, so we are no longer under the law of sin and death by God's grace, and he is our example, so therefore, <laughs> excuse me, therefore, we can live without sin and sickness, which is not to be confused with an affliction like Job experienced that is the cause of something that is not caused by something we have or have not done due to sin. So with that, I'm gonna quickly read these natural remedies that really are just very eye-opening in so far as um, it relates to atherosclerosis. Um, here, um, again, this is on page 524 in our Natural Remedies Encyclopedia, and it reads, Do not eat big evening meals. It's best only eat plain fruit and plain bread for supper and do this several hours before bedtime. I, I would probably be hard pressed to find many people that do that because we know many most people eat the largest meal for dinner, but um, that's pretty eye-opening um, in terms of that. Di our diet. Also, do not wear constrictive clothing, belts, garters, girdles, tight hosiery, etc. So, you know, a lot of people love to wear belts. I know women especially 
to cinch the waist and women women probably wear a lot more than most men from the standpoint of that but it's none of it is healthy so um be mindful of that um and last but not least if you know you are moving toward artery problems eat no free oils and i'm going to conclude with that can can anyone tell us what free oils are Eat no free oils if you know that you are moving toward artery problems. Oils that are not, I'll let somebody go here first before I say it. What does that mean? Eat, eat no free oils if you know you are moving towards an artery problem. What are oils, free oils? Oils that you have to put in food to cook it. Praise God. So that that's that's pretty pretty clear there. Pretty um, clear. Oil that, just... that you got to use to cook with. A lot of times we should we should cook with just water or bake. We should fry. You you saying like if I use olive oil to cook with, I shouldn't cook with olive oil. Is that what you say? If you got coronary disease or artery disease, oh. or okay. Rose, on, yeah. Then what do you cook with? If you if like if you need something to, to cook with me, what do you cook it with? If you have that, well, actually, believe it or not, some most of our stuff should be baked anyway. Okay. But, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Praise, okay. praise God. Um, uh, and thanks. with that, I'll turn it over to Brother MK. Hey, there's not too many things. Thanks. There's not too many things that I'm thinking from a vegetarian standpoint. Mm -hmm. Things that we fry. I think most of the things that, I think the only thing that I'm thinking about what I'm, when I cook, I think the only thing that I use to cook, use oil with is when I cook tofu eggs. I just thought about that. Hmm. Yeah. And that, ve that vegetarian chicken. I need no oil for that. I don't use oil for that. I put that on a... a um, I put that in the pan. Yeah, but you can you can you brother so when you cook vegetarian chicken, you can bake it in the oven by putting it on a uh uh what is that paper? What is that paper called? Uh, the um parchment paper. Yeah, there you go. That's what I use. I don't use oil anymore. And it cooked just as good. Amen, lights. Amen. Yeah, but anyway. All right, brothers and sisters, any more questions on healthy living at all? If not, let us begin our study. Our Father, once again, we come to your presence. Child in heaven, Lord, we ask you forgiveness of sins. Anything in our hearts and minds not right, we ask you to cast in the sea of forgiveness and rest our attention by the Holy Spirit and God's and lead us to all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Amen. real briefly, can anyone kind of Surmise what we uh, talked about this morning by the grace of God. Amen. I'll I'll give it a shot. Well, so anything that you can remember, that stuck to your memory. Okay, right. Praise God. Yeah, just the the biggest takeaway for me from this morning was the fact that the. And the title of the top, the topic was um, the righteousness by faith, the midnight cry, and the loud cry in that order. And the, my biggest takeaway was the fact that uh, the all three, the, you know, that righteousness by faith is a lifestyle, and um, that the message, the warning messages. Um, that they are all, all three are um, connect, interconnected and inter in, entwined and that um, Ellen G. White, she, she preached righteousness by faith before oh. the 1888 message. You taught, you wrote. 
Right. God, God gave her that message before 1888. So that, that was very eye-opening to me. I, I did not know that because typically when you hear about the 1888 message, it's, it's, it's spoken of like it was this new light that had never, ever been, you know, it was, it's sort of like it stands alone and almost like it trumps the writings of Ellen G. White. So that, that to me was very eye-opening. Okay. All right, anyone else before we move on? Okay. All right, brothers and sisters, let us turn to um, Philippians chapter 3, verses 121. What book? Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. We we'll probably read just we we'll probably read verse one through nine. Let me get there myself. You can just say amen. Amen. We all there, brothers and sisters. Philippians chapter three, one through nine. Okay, taking me all of there, I begin to read. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you, the same things to you, to me indeed not grievous, but for you safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. When he said beware of dogs, is he talking about literal dog brothers and sisters? No. What you talking about? False prophets. Okay. But we are the circumcision which worship God and the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, but what things were gained to me, those I count a loss for Christ. Yet dollars, and I count all things for loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, but do count them dumb that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? A little bit. What's that, what's that clear? Verse, verse nine sums it up. Just verse nine. Yeah, verse nine. Let's read verse nine again. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. In other words, you know, you can keep the law without Christ. You're living, the law doesn't save you. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So, I, matter of fact, you know what, let me, let me, this, this is a good time to read what I need to read about that. This may sum it up for you. Zion of Ages, chapter 28. Oh, come on now. Wow. It's not even trying to, let me, let me pull it up. All right, let me find it. Second. Wow. Oh. Devil don't want me to give this to you. All right, I, I just go to the Zyra Ages, 
chapter 28. Give me one second, brothers and sisters. Zab ages chapter 28 to dinner with the Sabbath. Check this out. Page 283, paragraph 3, I think it is. And then look at this. She says, uh, page 283, paragraph 2. This one's not what I'm going to read, but I'm going to read it in a second. The Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world. So the Sabbath was not only for Israel, it's for the whole world. Amen. Amen. All right. So here's here's a little more light on uh, that verse, Michelle. As the Jews departed from God and failed to make the righteousness of Christ their own by faith, the Sabbath lost its significance to them. As the Jews departed from God and failed to make the righteousness, the righteousness of Christ their own by faith. So what is it, what is the righteousness of Christ? Christ's character is um, the, the Ten Commandment law, the transcript, or rather. But he but but his, his righteousness was his lifestyle. His righteousness was he always did everything to please the Father, right? Amen. And he did no sin. Right. So he wasn't dependent upon his power. He was always dependent on whose power? God's power. Amen. Amen, sister. And so therefore, we'll not depend on our own right, because our own righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. So therefore, verse 9 of Philippians says, not having my own righteousness, which is the field of rags, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Because the Jews tried to do what? Tried to destroy Christ. That's right. And 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 by destroying Christ. Now, matter of fact, interesting. Thank you, Sister um, Deborah. She just made me think of a question. What was one of the ways that is that is subtle? That they were trying to destroy the administration of Christ. What was one of the things? Uh, say again. I don't know. I don't know if this is what you're looking for, but I was getting ready to say that's just like the Jews when Jesus was on the earth. That's what I'm talking and about. They were denying him. They were denying him as being the Messiah. Yes. Now walk that thing on out. You're going the right path. Now walk it on out, sister, if you can. But that's right. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm going. Somebody help out, brothers and sisters, because you're on the right track. No, well, to me, um, I can't pinpoint that, but the whole time, that's what they were trying to get him saying is in blasphemy. Right. They were trying to say that he was, you know, doing things on the unlawful things on the Sabbath. Yeah. You know, they, like I said, they didn't find him to be worthy, I guess, because they, you know, where he came from. And, you and so they, um, um, looking at his background, they, they're looking at him as supposed to be have this, this royal, he didn't have the purple robe, the crown on his head. I don't know if this is all what you're looking for, but I, I remember the Jews, you know, the whole time when Christ was here on earth, that's what they were trying to, they didn't want to accept him right. as being who he was. And, and some you said earlier was, they were trying to destroy the administration of Christ by mm -hmm. not, by continuing to what? To implement the ceremonial laws and the sacrifices. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I keep, yeah, I call it, they, they bring up Moses in them a lot. Kept yes. bringing up Moses. And and then um like the, the mosaic laws. Right. Which deal with the ceremonial law, which now remember now, let me let's let's make this clear, brothers, for those who may not know, in the land of internet. Moses did not have any laws. All those laws in, in chapter 35 of Deuteronomy and so on, and the Ten Commandment laws, God wrote the Ten Commandment laws on his itself, his own finger. The ceremonial laws. Moses wrote those laws that God gave him. But that is the Bible refers to the Mosaic law because Moses wrote them. Wrote them. But they, 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 all those laws came from God. So the way that the, the Jews 
uh, was, and matter of fact, and by the Jews not accepting Christ's righteousness, as Sister Deborah was explaining it, and by them not accepting it, the sacrificial system that Christ had implemented after his death, in which Christ was trying to show them, even while he was walking among them, that listen, not my own righteousness, but the righteousness of my Father, which is in heaven. He's I come not to do my own will, but the will of who? My Father who sent me. And, Father. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, when we do anything that's not in line with Christ, we're doing our what? The devil's work. In our own strength. That's right. The devil's work, our own strength. And then we know that gets us no, no further than what? But to the grave. Mm -hmm. Forever. Nowhere. nowhere. Amen. So is that Amen. is that clear, brothers and sisters? Any questions, Amen. comments on that? Amen. Right. I didn't. So, I don't know though that I see. I I ever recall you said that they tried to make the law of God of none effect by continually. This is what I wrote down by continually bringing up the ceremonial laws and the sacrificial system. I don't remember that being brought up by the Jews. No. I said they try to make the, the, the administration of Christ none effect by continuing to observe the sacrificial system laws and not observe Christ's administration in the most holy place, in the holy place. But did, did they observe sacrificial system during his yeah. ministry? Yeah, and afterwards. They have never accepted Christ as the Messiah. Right, but I didn't know that they continued to sacrifice animals. Yeah, remember they remember you read Desire of Ages, we great controversy. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, what happened? When he right before when he, right before he died, what happened when he died? Anybody remember that? All right, let's let's yep, yep, yep. Let's go there. Let's go there for real quickly. I think there was um I think there was in Matthew Twain Twain from top to bottom. Uh Matthew 20. Let's go to Matthew 2751. Brother Rod, can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah, sure. We can hear you loud and clear. Y'all might have quiet over there. Y'all nobody got y'all at a gunpoint, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're bad now. <laughs> no, we, no. Come on now. <laughs> Matthew, you. what you say? You didn't got me sick up, man. Matthew, Matthew 2751. Uh, let's go to uh Verse 50, Matthew 27, verse 50. Because I normally hear a baby talking or somebody saying something. I'm trying to keep them quiet. That's what I, I'm I, trying to No, you're keeping them too quiet. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, I ain't got to tell them to make no noise because they'll do that. <laughs> See, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you just had them mute. You just had them mute. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had them but trying to keep, you know. Yeah, but still, you, you, if, you, if you guys got. Answers, answer those questions, even though the baby talking, we're fine with that, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I try not to let it. No, 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 don't, don't stop answering stuff because the baby may be trying to talk. We're not doing that. Right, right, okay. <laughs> Especially if you got something to say. Are we at no. Matthew 27, verse 50, brother, uh, brother uh, 50 and 51? Amen. Okay, can somebody read that? Yeah, I'll read. If you want me to? Go ahead. He said, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Amen. So you see, Sister Michelle, that, that what, what, what was rent, Michelle? The veil of and, the temple. And, okay, so what was the temple? That What they did in the temple? They did what? Sacrifice, right? Service, right? Amen. And so therefore, Amen. it was symbolic that the sacrificial system was over the end it at Christ's death. Amen. He, was, he is now the sacrifice for all right. people and all things. He's the great sacrifice. 
Because praise now, God. Just, you know what? You know what? I need to find this. And I know many of us knew this, know this. Let me see. Give me one second. I got to show you something else, Michelle. Well, I can tell you stuff, but uh, uh, when Jesus told the people, when Jesus would heal someone, mm -hmm. he often would tell them to do what? Go and sin no more. Go kill the priest. There you go. That's what I'm looking for, Brother Roy. The one that says, go show thyself to the priest. Go tell the priest. Let yes. me see. Yeah, go to Matthew 8, 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go to Matthew 8, 4. Matthew 8, 4. Matthew chapter 8, verse 4. Chapter 8. Uh, 1 through, Matthew 8, 1 through 4. Amen. All right. When you get there, say amen. Let's, let's somebody can read it. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 4. Amen. Okay. Amen. It says, you want me to read it? Yes, sir, go ahead. Find us find it. It says, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way and show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now, brother and sister, now, if the, if the sanctuary service was not in, 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 uh, in play, why would Jesus tell him, go show thyself to the priest, which he is the, which he is the priest and the high priest himself? You see that, Michelle? See that? Okay, I'm going to reread. What verse is that? Oh, in verse four? Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Why would Jesus do that if... Uh... If the, if the sacrificial service is done away with already. Now, let me ask you a question. After Christ's resurrection, after Christ's death and resurrection, was there any time that you ever read any disciples told them to go to self, go to show that self into the priest when they healed them? No. No. And why was that, Sister Michelle? Because he had died jesus it was the high priest but he was the high priest even before he died but but but, but why though because, because it, he did away with that the, the, the veil was rent yeah i know you cross. but what that means you reading what you just you reciting what you're reading but you're not explaining to me you make sure you understand yeah i mean i i'm i'm gathering that you don't need to go tell the priest anything if that system of that system is done away with um the jesus right. jesus is the the high priest and therefore he's a sacrifice uh, amen he's a sacrificial system he ever all the sacrificial system on earth is done away with when he died on the cross that's right amen, amen. so that's why paul says that not having my own righteousness which is of the law but what? But the right, right. Right. Which, is faith, which is through faith, which is, which is the righteousness of God by faith. In other by words, faith. So it's not no so more the faith that I that I'm offering a lamb that I have faith that this lamb blood was pointed to Christ, mm -hmm. would cleanse me from all unrighteousness, which is which is symbolic it would. 
until, especially on the Day of Atonement, it was acted out and betrayed. But now the sacrificial system when Christ died has been put to an end. And so therefore, what happens? Christ, we go to Christ and his blood cleanses more all right, unrighteousness, right? All unrighteousness. Now, this is going to shock you. This is going to shock you. This is the first time I ever said this, I think. That's why there should be no more priests on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, Praise Brother M. Kate. God. Uh, Brother M. Kate. Yes, sir. Me and, uh, you know, matter of fact, me and Sister Mary, we, you know, spent a lot of time together. And I was asking, and I said, can man make apostles? <laughs> no. I just answered. Because Jesus made the apostles, you know. What? Man, man make men impossible. <laughs> some make men man on unity. Some make God make unity. But yeah. So some men are ordained by man, some men are ordained by God. That's right. I'm listen to men that are ordained by God. Me too. That was dumb. <laughs> who stay who kept their hand to the plow? Amen. So Sister Michelle, you see this before we move on? Yes, amen. So it, it, so the sacrificial system was still going on during Jesus' earthly ministry. And, and the reason for that is why? Because the veil hadn't been rent from top nope. to bottom, the veil of nope. the temple, that is. Oh, nope. because he hadn't died yet. He didn't die yet, amen. Okay, praise God. Get that, get that in the day in your mind. It's very simple. Christ died. Read Hebrew, go back and read Hebrews chapter, the whole book of Hebrews. Actually. When you look at Hebrews, or when you look at just the administration of Christ, look at the desire of ages. So therefore, it must be, it must be solidified in our hearts and minds that we may, we, we, we must know what, where, why we believe what we believe. And mm -hmm. so we can give a reason for the answer that is within us. Amen. Amen. Hope that's in us. Question. Amen. Yes, uh, just a point of clarification. Now, I do understand that when Jesus died, obviously, because it is finished, as he said, um, you know, once he gave up the ghost, that 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 the sacrificial, no need, more need for the sacrificial system. But we mm -hmm. do recognize that that the, so the Jews that did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, they continue with the sacrificial system, correct? As a nation, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know how long that, that system it lasted, but I don't think they're doing that now. I don't know what they're doing now. Me too. <laughs> but that, I, matter of fact, they definitely don't have to, this, they, 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 like we said earlier this morning, who's, that, who's the high priest and who's the priest? Mm -hmm. You know, another thing, um, Brother Mo, I, I mean, that's, that's in, this is in Hebrew too, talking about how we have a we have a, a great high priest yes. that passed into the heaven. Jesus, Son of God, let us hold fast to my profession. Now we now we still got a high priest, but he in heaven. That's Jesus Perfect. Christ. Hmm? Not on earth. Not on earth. I say in heaven. Verse 14, 414. So you know, it's a good point that you're bringing out this distinction because a lot of people, you know, we, we get we confuse the ceremonial. With the stuff you know, like that's still happening right here on Earth, with the things that's going on in the heaven. So it's good that you you know differentiating and distinguishing how they are different, the different timelines. Like, like you said, how you emphasize when Jesus, right before he you know gave up the ghost, what it happened afterwards, and then now how he ridded us of this atoning and stuff like that, the sacrificial stuff. So now that, that, that's that's real. That's real and important to know. Amen. And that's why you don't see God. Amen. That's thank you, brother. That's why you see God's last day church. Hold on for me. Somebody's calling in. That that's that's why you don't see God last day church got priests. Amen. So, and then it seems like a lot of these people are teaching error. Then I mean, you know, I, I gotta like, say, huh? Seem like it is. It is. I mean, I mean, that's just like wow. Sure. It's just 
All right, I'm gonna just leave it right there. Mm. Amen. All right, brothers, any more comments on that before we move on? Yes, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, after, even right after the veil was torn, after the um, veil was torn, Christ died on the cross, he didn't, I mean, he didn't right then go to heaven because remember he's with the disciples. Yes, ma'am. He came and with the disciples and stuff. So, is that meaning that everything, because once he went to heaven, and it was final. I know it was final on the cross, but it didn't go into effect until Christ left. Because was he? How many days was he still down here? Oh, oh, hold, okay. hold on for a minute. I, I, okay, now you said immediately. So, and I, when I thought you said immediately, I thought you were talking about that same day. But all right, brother, and sister, can someone explain to us? Now, I can easily, not, I should, Lord, forgive me. I'm not going to say I can easily, but I can share, but I like for the Bible study group to share, amen? So can someone share what Sister uh, Deborah just said? And for those who just came in, we're in Philippians chapter uh, 3, verses uh, 1 through 9. So can someone kind of answer what Sister Gloria, uh, Sister, Gloria, Sister uh, Deborah said? And can you repeat that again so we know the question? She, she was saying, Christ didn't immediately go to heaven. He did not immediately go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So how long was he on earth? How long was he on earth before he went to heaven? And and by and by the sacrificial system, when did it end? It did you know? If, am I representing what you said correctly, Sister Deborah? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what I'm asking. Yes, sir. Right. So I need someone to. to Put that like that's a jigsaw puzzle right there. I need someone to unscramble that. Well, I mean, I, I give you, I mean, I can't tell you right now. I wish I could in the scripture how where it says, but I understand he was he was here 33 and a half years. Okay. Um, and then uh, um and then he um he died and then he rose in three days. Okay. Um so and it, it was upon his death and ascension into heaven that when he said it is finished on the cross. That, that, that the payment for the, the sins was, was taken care of. So um, when he said it is, it is finished, that's that's when um, the sacrificial system needed to end because the payment was already made through his blood. I don't know if that's everything that you look for. Um, it's a little more detail. The only thing I would, yeah, the only thing I would add to that is on the, the sixth day, Christ was crucified on the sixth day. He was, he rested in the grave on the seventh day. He kept the Sabbath, praise God, seventh day Sabbath, that is. And then on the first day of the week, he, he rose, he got up out of the grave and he rose. That's the third day from the standpoint of, you know, when it, when the Bible speaks, like brother Ken said that in three days, on the third day, I should say. So that's the that's the three days. Yeah. Wasn't it three days before he descended up? Uh, and well, I'm, I don't want to say yes or no. Yes or no. It was forty days. But but it was forty days because he met with uh, the disciples walking. He talked with them, and he met with the disciples on the beach, and he fed them. And then he met with the disciples before that right there in the upper room. All right. So, 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 but, okay, let's put this in the right perspective. But I'm, I'm going to give you scriptures. All right, let's, let's go. So let me, let me ask this question and then we go to the scripture. When did Jesus first go back to heaven after his death? On the first day of the week. Oh, hold on for a minute. When did Jesus go back to heaven after his death? No, sir. After his death, yes, ma'am. After, what, Go after ahead. his death, uh, eight, um, it was in the tomb, and they went, and he wasn't found. Okay. So that's the part uh, I'm getting at. That I know he just um, I don't know how I want to say it. The the um spirit came back in him, but he was still here on earth with his disciples for a while. Okay. I think it was. All right, let me clear this up. All right, let's go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. 
John chapter 20. Let's go to verse. Let me see where do I want to start at. Let uh, go to verse. Uh, let's go to verse one. John chapter 20, verse one. Then we'll read on down to where I need to stop at, and you'll see it. Okay. What, where, where, where are we now? Where are we going again? John chapter twenty, verse one John. through. Yep, John Saint John chapter twenty, verse one through seventeen. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. All right. Now. Since someone read that and stop, stop at verse 16. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Go ahead, get ready. Okay, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seat the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples when, whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth in that other disciples, of the disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he's stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet did he not in. Then come and Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and see the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She says unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seek, whom seek it thou? She supposing to him to be the gardener, says unto him, sure. If thou have borne his hints, tell me where thou, thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. She said, stop at 16. Go to, go to 17. Okay. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So sister um, Deborah and, and brothers and sisters, y'all see that he told he tells Mary what? I have not yet ascended. Don't touch me. But he Amen. said, don't touch him. Right. Yeah, Interesting. He went into to his father. Now Amen. he said, Mary, not do not touch me because I'm not yet ascended to my father. Right, amen. Now, we're gonna um, now. I want to take you to the old testament, and I'm gonna read you some when he actually goes and to present, present himself to the father. But then we're gonna come back to chap John chapter 20, and then we're gonna see where he tells when the disciple touch me. That's how you know he went to the father already. Let's so let's go to let's go to Psalm 24. Was that was that clear what I just said? He told Mary not to touch him because he not he had not sent it to his father, right? Amen. But go tell the disciples that I sent to my father. Now, 
before Mary can get to Jesus, he's already in heaven. Before Mary can get to the disciples, he's already in heaven. As soon as Mary go tell, he's already translated. He already been, he's already went up to heaven. Forget the word translated. He always, he always has ascended up to heaven that quickly. Because he said, what? Go tell, go tell what? Disciples I sent to, to my father and your father, my God, your God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to see how did, then we're going to come back to John 20 and we're going to prove by the word of God that he has already went to heaven. But let's go, hold your hand in John and let's go to uh, Psalms. Before, before we go in there. Say again? Can I say one thing while you're going there? Yes, ma'am. When Jesus went up and then what he told uh, Mary, mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, to go tell mm -hmm. the disciples, mm -hmm. but when he came when he came back from visiting, the, from going to heaven, that's when, uh, which one was the doubter? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. We're going to get that in. Hold that thought. We're going to get that. Okay. That's what we're going to That's not what we're going to do. When we get okay. okay. into this, I want, you to run, <laughs> I, want you to get, I want you to read that. Then in, in John chapter 20, verse 18 and onwards, and then we're going we're gonna to encapsulate it there. So hold that thought if you can for a moment. Yes. But yeah, but I, I'm going to show us where Christ has went into heaven. Let's go to uh, Psalms 24, verses 7 through 10. Can anyone, can anybody, can you, anybody read that? You get that? Let everybody get there first. Amen. Seven, 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 but, seven. But this, is, this, this question, it, it may how long it came from how the sacrificial system ended when Christ died and how, when did he go to heaven? When was the first time he went to heaven? And then we're going to see how long he stayed on earth before he went to heaven for the final time, before he comes back to take us all home. Amen. Amen. Everybody hey. say amen when he comes yeah. to take us home. We all should say amen to that. Amen. Maybe y'all didn't hear me. Amen. Amen. I heard you. Ain't that's what we're waiting for? It's right. That's what I'm waiting for. Amen. That's what amen. I'm waiting for. Amen. Lift up your head. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. All right. Brothers and sisters, are we ready? Yes. Amen. Right. Can somebody read uh, Psalm 24, 7 through 10? Yes. Go ahead. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this? Hold on. Okay. Hold, on. Hold on for a second. Because bro, bro, I'm going to stop you everywhere. And let me, I'll read it because I, I, I shouldn't even ask you. <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead. It's good. Christ is, this, this is right after Christ had just talked to Mary. So he present, he goes to present himself to the Father because what? Mary is still, Mary is still what? What is Mary still? Where she still? She, what is Mary still? What is she still? Mary is still in the sinful flesh. It's still in the flesh, yes. God, Jesus is glorified without, always without sin. So the, the, the sacrifice had to be presented to the most high priest, to the high priest in the day of atonement to be accepted. He had to examine it. He had to examine the offering. He had to, so Jesus had to go to God so God can examine him to accept him for what he done was good enough for us, for, for him, for us to be redeemed by Christ's blood and death and resurrection. That's why Mary couldn't touch him because he had the father only, he must go present himself to the father first. Because remember, Hey, Jesus always let people touch him, did he not? Come on, talk Amen. to me, brother and sister. Talk to Amen. me. Amen. Yeah. Come on, man. talk to me. And you, yeah, I, one other thing. Wait, wait, Sister Mary. Wait, I believe that, that's the reason why the stone had to be uh, at where he where he lay because somebody might have went in there at night. <laughs> Yeah. And try to go on. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. going there and trying to touch him, take like it, you know, they do body. at the march no, where it's not. Let me go take his body. But she said, "Angels guarded the tomb of Jesus." Amen. And, he, the men, the, and see, and see. No, no, let me diverge for a minute there. So the <laughs> Romans, the, see, when the, the devil mm -hmm. deceives his own self, the <laughs> Roman soldiers said, "Oh, we see. It's interesting when somebody want to use the word against you. They know the whole Bible, but when you tell them to follow, they don't know anything." <laughs> So here it is. You have the Roman telling Pilate, hey, it was a Pilate, a Pilate. Hey, 
that deceiver said, and they called Jesus a deceiver. That deceiver said, and the disciples said that he's going to raise up in three days. And uh, we need to go set a guard upon the, upon the uh, uh, tomb. So make sure that, you know, he's nobody come and takes him. And, and the, the, the worst error will be, the last error will be worse than the first. So they came not knowing that God would take what they were saying to show the people that Christ was not taken and there was a hoax. So the, the Roman armors had a hundred men came, band of centurions came and, and guarded the, the tomb of Jesus. And so no the disciples will come and still, this is in the Bible, don't take my word for it. This is the, this is the, and in Matthew, John, Luke, and in, 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 in the gospels. So the angels, so the, the, men, the men came and guarded the tomb thinking the disciples or hoping the disciples, well, really they was, they was hoping Jesus was not going to raise again, rise again. So they said, he's in, in Pilate said, you have an army, you have, you have a, a band, go, go, go make it sure. So they, they guarded the, the tomb of Jesus so nobody would come and take his body. And the spirit, and the Bible tells us, the spirit of the prophets shares with us that when the angels descended on the to, on the Senate, those men became like dead men. They was, they was frozen still. And they saw everything that happened. They saw everything that happened. And they was too, they were so scared. And they quake, you know, it's interesting. The, the angels and the angel glory did not even destroy them because of the fact is they God needed them, not needed them, he used them for a witness that Christ really rose because the two angels ascended from heaven and they then and the men, all the men stood, hundred people stood, soldiers with their weapons, couldn't even couldn't even use them, frozen like they was frozen in ice with their eyes wide open. And then the angel said, Jesus that fought the father calleth thee. And those who die in Christ, the angels that march thy grave, that excel in strength, going to say, rise, thou sleepest in the dust, thy father calleth thee. So, brothers and sisters, the soldiers went back and told Pilate what happened. And they said, no, this cannot get out. Say that we fell asleep and the disciples came and stole them away. Now, if you know anything about the army, that if you sleep on duty, that is treason. And that is a, a sure sign that you're gonna be killed. And they said, we'll give you money. We'll, we'll make sure that you don't be killed. Let's go and perpetuate this lie. And we'll make sure, this is in the Bible spirit of prophecy. I'm not making this up, I'm not smart enough to make it up. And they came and, and put that loud that the disciples came and stole them by night while we slept. If you're sleeping, who you know, how you know they got stolen? Have anybody witnessed anything while they were asleep? No. So brothers and sisters, so here, going back to Psalms 24, and it says, and the angels said, and, 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 and the angels that escorted Jesus back to heaven, and they said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. What the Bible says in, in, in Revelation 22, 14, 15, blessed day and into the gates, into the city, they may have right to true life. They do the commandments of God. Amen. Lift up your, and, you, and you everlasting doors. What everlasting doors? The heaven has everlasting doors. Amen. And the king of glory shall come in. And you know what? It is said, brothers and sisters, that the, one of the, some of the angels that will say, oh, you lift up your heads, oh, you gates and you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And another group of angels will say, who is this king of glory? And another group of angels said, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty and God. I'm not making this up this is the spirit of prophecy, brothers and sisters. And he said, oh, lift up your heads, oh, ye everlasting doors. Lift up the everlasting doors, oh, ye gates. Verse 9, even lift up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And they all say, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, the king of glory. Why he's the king of glory? Because he is, he is presented before the Father. And now he is accepted by the father. And the father examined him and said, what you've done is well accepted. Now, then 
Mary, you can speak, please, to share your story. But then we're reading in John chapter 20, what you ready to say. Verse 18 and onwards. You don't mute, Sister Mary, you're trying to say something. Yes, sir. Go ahead and finish your story. Now we now we at your story, John chapter 20, verse 18. Now you're talking about Thomas. Now we that's where we at right now. Mm -hmm. And it says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoke these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus the, and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So, Sister Mary, you, you were sharing something about Thomas. This is where, this, this is where the story is. Like, this is where he is. So, finish your thought on about what you're saying about Thomas. Okay, uh, Thomas was a doubter. In verse 24. Yes. And um, so he didn't believe uh, uh, like some of the other disciples did. And for Thomas to believe that that was Jesus, he said, he said except I shall see him. Yeah. And he, he uh, said, except I should see him and touch him. And he said, Jesus said, you see the, ho the holes in, in my hand and in my feet? And he said, touch him. Touch me. He told him. Read verse 27. Huh? Read verse, somebody read verse 27. I read it. Then said he to Thomas, reach high to thy finger and behold my hand and reach high to thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believe it. He read his brother, brother uh, Roy. Okay. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's faith work. Amen. 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 So, brother and sister, you see here that Jesus allowed Thomas to touch him, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did not, allow, did not allow Mary to touch him because of what? See, he hadn't. Went to the Father. Went to the Father. Not yet. Did himself as a living sacrifice. So yes. example, an acceptable sacrifice. Go ahead. Really? Uh, one more, one more thing. <laughs> well, I may be wrong. That's what studies. I may for. not. So, see, Mary was still in the flesh. She, I mean, she was flesh. Yeah. And sin can't enter into the to the king. No. Nope. At all. Right. So. Is that why she couldn't touch him? Well, the reason why is because Jesus had not presented himself to the Father. And by, because, because Mary stood in the sinful flesh and he's glorified. Right. So therefore, he had to present himself a living sacrifice to the Father that what he'd done was accepted by the Father. And only the Father could have proven before he came into any earthly contact. Because if you know right. all throughout Christ's ministry, people always touched him. The woman with the 12, with the 12 issues of blood. Uh, uh -huh. when he, 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 Jesus sometimes touched people. So, uh -huh. so, but here, and then we see that he went back to heaven. Sister uh, uh, um, Deborah and Brother uh, Greg, you, you see that you see the difference there? You see the subtle difference? Not the subtle, but you see the difference where he told Mary not to touch me, mm -hmm. but then he allowed. Yeah. Then, you see Tom. that? Okay, so Tom, right. Okay, the disciples, Thomas wasn't there when Jesus first came. Right. So we see that we see that, and then in brother says, uh, also to go to Luke chapter uh, uh, 24, uh, 12 through um, 32. You can write that down. You see the two disciples walk, and they said, Did not our heart? And Jesus was walking with them and sharing with them. He said, Did not our heart, did not our heart burn within us as we walk by the way? 
So, mm -hmm. and then the last time before Jesus left them, was he be telling Peter, you know, feed my sheep. Matter of fact, in John chapter 21. And then, yeah. uh, and then if you go to Acts chapter one, Verses one through three, well, one through eight. My fact, one through nine, ten, eleven. One through eleven. Now, somebody read in in John in Acts chapter one, one through eleven. Michelle, you might have quiet. I ain't heard you read in a minute, brother Ken, sister Michelle. Oh, I'm I'm here. I'm listening. I okay. I was trying to see the answer to. It sounded like you were saying that Jesus didn't ascend on the third day, so I was waiting for that oh, answer. No, no, no. What I'm saying, he did. And that's why he told Mary, don't touch him yet. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he's not sent to the Father. When he said, I sent to the Father, I said, remember I said that before Mary got to the disciple, Jesus was already in heaven? Remember I said that? Amen. You remember that when I made that comment? I made it spoke too fast. So here, when Jesus came back, to earth and he met with disciples. The disciples was now the disciple wasn't meeting in the place in the upper room because they were trying to pray. They was meeting because they were afraid of the Jews. Amen. But when Christ appeared to them, that's when he allowed Thomas to touch him. So you know he had went to heaven. That's one time. And then the and the last time that Christ uh went to heaven is right here in, in, in John Acts chapter one, verses uh one through eleven. Can someone read that? Acts chapter oh. one, verse one through oh. eleven. And Go ahead, Amen. Go ahead. So, so he rose on the third day. Third. Right, he rose on the third day. Does he go back? Then he goes back to heaven. Then doesn't he? Yes, sir. Right after, yes. Right, after, right after he talked to Mary. And then, okay, so he rose. He rose. Talked to Mary. Went back to heaven. Yep. And came And came back. Yes, yeah. Can I say one thing in the midst of that? What's that? He, he asked Mary a question. He said, why seek ye among the dead? Living among the dead, that's right. Living among the dead. So, so he was letting us. her know that he wasn't dead. Right. He so was the, was, the, was, the, really, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, why was, so when he came back, how, how long did he stay this time? Well, hold on for a minute, Brother Ken. Uh, Sister Mary, finish the thought. I like where you're going with that. He, he asked, he, he asked Mary, why seek thee among the dead? The living among the dead. Right. And what's the lesson for us? The lesson for us is that, that you don't have to answer this. I was asking Bible study question. You can't answer though. I was just asking Bible study question. Um, but go ahead, you can answer though. I mean, I'm not saying you can't answer. The lesson for us is that when we are when we are uh Trusting in God and believing by faith, by faith mm -hmm. we should uh, trust and believe because and God is going to heal that thing according to our faith. And He's alive. In Him, That's that right. He's alive. That's what the key is. Right. And, 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 and also, too, is that, brother, so that we should not weep as the, those who have no hope. So, when the dead is, listen, when the dead is dead, and they die. You can cry all you want to cry. Christ, I'm not saying he won't raise them from the dead. I mean, I'm not going to say what God won't do. But your crying is not going to make them make that person come up from the grave or come up from that coffin. It's not going to make a difference. Amen. <laughs> it could. But I'm just saying, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, I don't want, I'm never going to say what God won't do. I don't want, but I mean, no. some things I would say, God won't lie. I will say that. But Amen. what I'm saying is, so, so brothers and sisters, so now, Brother Ken, you come back to your question. How, how long did he stay on the earth before he went back? Well, I said that he rose on the third day. He was here. Right. He didn't allow um, Mary Magdalene to touch him because he hadn't sent to his father. Then he, then he went back to heaven, correct? Uh -huh. yeah. And he came back again and met with his disciples, correct? Right. So how long did he stay before he went back to heaven? That the final time? Yes. Yeah. Praise God for the word of God and spirit of prophecy. Let us go to Acts. Brother Ken, can you read Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 11? And I'm going to one, I'm going to verse 11 for a specific reason. Okay. But 1 through 11. But you, you'll find your answer way before you get to verse 11. 
Let everybody get there. Acts chapter one, Acts chapter one, verse one through eleven. Amen. I'm there. Other sisters, I don't know everything, but I know somebody who does know everything. Amen. That's all right. <laughs> That's right. So, sister, uh, why why everybody's finding that sister Greg, sister uh, uh, Debor and brother Greg? You see where that word? You're gonna see where he went back to heaven, where and how long he stayed the last time. Brother Greg already quoted it, but I just want to read it because some of us I want to see yeah. after that. Yeah. But go ahead. But but before Ken start reading, but the main point we want to get at is when Christ died, the sacrificial system ended. Amen. That's the point we wanted. The sacrifice, the earth of sanctuary, the earth of sanctuary was done away with. And if you were still following that system, you were not following Christ. And if you follow that system today, you're not following Christ. Amen. And okay, that includes the feast days and all yeah. those ceremonial laws. Yeah, so for now, yes. and also, too, well, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna make that comment. Go ahead, brother uh, Ken. Okay. Uh, the former treaties I have made, have I made, O Theopolis, and of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, to the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen in them forty days, okay, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, I got my answer right there. And being assembled together with them, command them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, with all this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of, the, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gaze up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Brother and sisters, if you don't, if you do not remember, or if you forget everything else, if you keep this your, to your memory, you will not be deceived. If you remember verse 11 of chapter one of, of Acts, it states that Jesus, the disciple, actually the angel said to 10 and 11, said this same Jesus, which is taken up from you in heaven shall come so in like manner as you have seen him going to heaven. In other words, when Satan walks the earth to, to deceive the people, that he is Christ, do you know that's a deception? Christ does not walk the earth when he come back. Christ would descend the same way he went up in the clouds in the sky. Nobody would have to tell you. So if you could put this to memory, when someone says, hey, this dazzling being, Jesus over in, in Iraq and Afghanistan and Israel and New York and California and Metropolis and, and, and Carbondale and, and all of them anywhere, healing folks and raising them up from the dead. Rest assured, if somebody got to tell you, it's not Jesus. You would know every eye shall see him, Revelation says, and those that pierce him. So brothers and sisters, as we continue to understand what the right, this is part of the righteous by faith, that we believe by faith that Christ is going to come as we, as the, as the disciples saw him go. Amen. Amen. Now, any question on that before we move back to the righteous by faith in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11? Any, any more questions? All right. If not, let's go to let's go to uh, uh, either comments, either one. Let's go to Hebrews, cha Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 7.
You could just say amen. What did you say turn to? I'm sorry, bro. That's fine. Hebrews uh, 7, 1 through 11. One, Hebrews 11, 1 through 7. Amen. Stop. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1 through 7. When all we all get that, can we get somebody to read that for us, please? And then we're going to start looking at the spirit of prophecy, what she says about the rising by faith. I'll read it. Is that one through seven? Yes, sir. And which reads as follows. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. For if by, the, for, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteous, which is by faith. Amen. Oh, that's I, it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Brother Ken. But listen, how did, how did it? No. Do you, let me ask you, do we all know what an heir is? An heir? What's an heir? Amen. They, What's they an inherit heir? something from, they inherit something. They're a benefactor. Right. So, so, Noah was a hero, which is rising by faith because he did what? Because Noah did what? Okay. Say again, uh, Brother Roy and Sister Michelle. No, go ahead, Sister Michelle. I I'll wait. No, just he kept the law. He fulfilled the promise. Uh, simplify that. Go ahead, Brother Roy. And he, he, he me and Warren, he moved with fear. He went on and built that ark. <laughs> Right, but but by, why he become? Oh, he I was said, obedient. Obedient. That's right. By obedient, he believed God. He was obedient to His word, which is righteous by faith, brother and sister. Amen. Well, see, it, it came with a choice. He made a choice Amen. to be obedient. He Amen. made a choice to go ahead and do what God told him to do. To save them. Because uh, even though he didn't understand at first that it was going to rain before the days before the night. Yeah. But God knew. Trusting God. So he yeah. trusted in God. He made a choice to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. So now we read these things. And I always ask this question at some point during some of our studies sometime. Why do we get so fuddled and, and, and I've been out of shape when things don't go our way? I mean, I don't get that. I mean, we, we, need, we need to stand fast. We need to stand on the promise of God. We need to persevere. Amen. again? Self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Let, let me read something real quickly Finish. out of uh, out of uh, out of Zara pages, page one twenty-five, one twenty-six, real quickly. We're dealing with verse six of the same chapter. The tempter can never compel us to do evil. Amen. The devil didn't make you do it. He cannot control minds unless they are yielded to his control. So nobody can throw no witchcraft on you unless you want them to do it. The will must consent. Faith must let go its hold upon Christ before Satan can exercise his power upon us. You get that? Faith must let hold of Christ before the devil can do anything to you. That's an amen, isn't it? Amen. That's right. Some people, you know, Brother Mark, since you said that, can I make a comment right now? Go ahead. You know, when you hear people talk about somebody got something on them. So that means they believe in what that person is talking about more than they do God, right? Right. That's right. That's right. It is. But every simple desire we cherish affords him a foothold. Every point in which we fail of meeting the divine standard is an open door by which he can enter to tempt 
and destroy us. And every failure or defeat on our part give occasion for him to reproach Christ. Wow. We should not present our petition to God. Listen to this. We should not present our petitions to God to prove whether he will fulfill his word, but because he will fulfill it. Wow, you get that? We should not ask God for something to try to prove that he will do it, but because he will do it. Not to prove he, he, not to prove that he loves us, but because he loves us. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Amen? But Amen. faith... And brother, and brother. Hold, on, hold on for a minute. Uh, Sister Michelle, go ahead, Brother uh, Wayne. You, uh, I guess I always, you, you can call me, if, if you see that I'm picky, just tell me to shut up. <laughs> you can't tell me to sit down, I'm already sitting down. <laughs> but um, now, it's because I have an issue with this. And the word air is, is involved here. And and when, when, when one becomes air, it's not by any works, usually not by works that anyone has done, usually not, but I don't know, you know, but then the question was asked to the point, I don't remember exactly, but how, how, how did Noah become righteous? And some, some, I believe some answer was because he obeyed or kept the commandments. And we already read Philippians 3, 9. And Philippians 3, 9 said, be found in him. Mm -hmm. In him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ or God, righteousness which is of God, righteousness which is of God by faith. Right. Now, it would seem as though the answer would, would be uh, what made him righteous, it wasn't simply by building the ark, but but simply that he believed and trusted in God. Yeah, that's what. That's, that's not, not, not because not because he kept the commandment as as, as it were. Although, what does twenty two fourteen say of Revelation? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that mm -hmm. they may write to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. But the God which worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Right. That's the, the, the point. So you, I hope you can see the point I'm trying to make. You no, know, brother. It's not our righteousness. It's not, man, I, I did this. I, I, I make that, you know, let me know. No, no. No, we, we said that. I said that. I came back after, after somebody said that. I came back and said, not, not because of that, because by his faith, he believed God. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, but you, you just explained a little more depth. I was right to the point. You just explained it more. Uh, and we thank God for that. He, he just explained it more. But yes, yeah, uh, someone did make the comment by, by, because by obedience to the laws. No, because he believed God. Because he obeyed God by faith. He believed God's word. So yeah, th thank you, brother. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely what it is. I just didn't go in depth as you did. But yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it. No, no, no. We, no, man, hey, look, brother. That's why iron sharp as iron. Everybody takes a little, little bit, a little further, a little deeper. So that's why we all have Bible study. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, that's that's a blessing. But that that's you explained it better than I did. Amen. You walked it on out. I just went right to the point. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. But faith is the faith is no sense allied to presumptions. Only he who has true faith is secure against presumptions. For presumption is Satan's counterfeit of faith. Michelle, you had something to say. Um, no, no, I'm good. You sure? Yeah, because I don't remember it, what it was, so it must not have been important. Well, that would could have snatched it away from you. That's why it might have been important. Faith claims God promises and brings forth fruit in obedience. But Sumption also claims their promises, but uses them as Satan did to excuse transgression. Faith would have led our first parents to trust the love of God and to obey his commands. But some led them to transgress his law, believing that he had, believing that his great love would save them from the consequence of their sin. That is serious, brother and sister. We, we believe that, and some I, people don't, you know, some church members don't believe that God would, God would allow them to be destroyed. 
Some people don't. Uh, some people don't. Just remember. Go ahead, Sister Michelle. No, the, the on that point of presumption, we learned we learned that lesson from Jesus after he spent the um, that time in the wilderness, and he was tempted by Satan, and um, he said, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." That's presumption. That's right. Amen. So presumption led them to transgress the law, believing that his great love would save them from the consequence of their sin. It is not faith that claims the favor of heaven without complying with the condition on which mercy is to be granted. Let me read it again. It, or is it, it is not faith that claims the favor of heaven without complying with the conditions on which mercy is to be granted. Genuine faith has its foundation in the promises and provision of the scriptures. Desire of Ages 125, 126. So, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we can, a lot of these conversations we have, not us here, but people have who's in Christ and who's outside of Christ. Brothers and sisters, if, you're, if your belief is not based on scripture, you're outside of Christ. That doesn't mean you're going to always be outside of Christ, but at that point, you're outside of Christ. It is what it is. And, and God's word does not make one thing evil, another thing good. So, all right, brothers and sisters, here we go. Now let's go to see what the spirit of the prophet had to say about rising by faith. Amen. Any questions on that before we move on? And, 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 and the next part, next time we come together, because I think we have enough to read before the sun set, we're going to deal with the midnight cry. Amen. But we may be, we should be able to finish this by writing by faith. I don't know yet. Any comments before we before I start reading on eight manuscript releases, chapter 72, number five and 97? Okay. A need for a proper concept, concept of writing by faith. I think I got, some, I ain't gonna read the whole thing here, but I got some highlighted here. So let me go to the highlighted part. Hope I got some highlighted. Okay, yeah, I do. All right. Eight main list, eight main script releases, 277, paragraph two. Oh, that all could see this and embrace the message given them of God. He had raised up his servant to present truth that because it involves lifting the cross has been lost sight of and is buried beneath the rubbish of form formality. It must be rescued and be reset in the framework of present truth. It claims must be asserted and its position given in it the third angel's message. Let the ministers of Christ sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, and seek God while he is to be found. Call upon him while you are now lying at the foot of the cross of Calvary. Divest yourselves of all pride and as the representative guardians of the church, weep between the porch and the altar. Cry, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach. Take from us what thou wilt, but withhold not thy Holy Spirit from us. Thy people pray, O Pray for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Manuscript releases, manuscript releases 27, 1889. Also, the need is under the need of a new concept of righteousness by faith, September 13, 1889. So, brothers and sisters, you see the spirit of prophecy. Sister White is God is telling the church to accept this message. Now, are, are anybody familiar with Uriah Smith? Anyone for me with Uriah Smith? Amen. Okay. Well, Uriah Smith, one of the uh, pioneers back then. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you what she said to her. This is in 1888, chapter 127. Let me get to that. Let me get to that part. 1888, 1053, paragraph four. The latest sin message have been sounded. Take this message in all its phases and sound it forth to the people wherever. Providence opens the way. Justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ are the themes to be presented to a perishing world. What is it? Justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ are the, team, are the themes to be presented to a perishing world. Oh, that you may open the door of your heart to Jesus. The voice of Jesus, the great vendor of heavenly treasures, is calling to you. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. 
but I will write no more. My heart is drawn out in love towards you, and my desire is that you shall trump with the third angel's message. Letter 24, 1892, 1888, 1054, paragraph one. That was to Uriah Smith that didn't accept the rights of my faith message. And here it is, brothers and sisters. 1888, chapter 24, looking back at the Minneapolis. I'm going to skip down. And I can, those who have emails, I can send you all the stuff you want. It's a lot. I'm just. Elder E.G. Wagner had the privilege granted him of speaking plainly and presenting his views upon justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law. This was. Now, brothers, y'all remember what I told y'all a minute ago? Y'all, not a minute ago. What did I say about rising by faith earlier this morning? Y'all remember what I said about rising by faith earlier? All right, let me read it again. Elder E.J. Wagner had the privilege granted him of speaking plainly and presenting his views upon justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law. This was no new light, but it was old light placed where it should be in the third angel's message. What is the burden of that message? John sees a people, he says, Here's, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12, right by faith. Oh. This people, John behold, just before he sees the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, a golden crown in his hand, a sharp sickle. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I thought there was something else I had on that. Maybe I didn't. Okay, let me see. Let me go to my first page, and I think it was. I think that's it. Nah, this is this is something else. Any comments on that, brothers and sisters, before we move on? No, just um, to your point about, or to what you just read, that righteousness by faith was not new light. That's mm -hmm. compelling. Man. Okay, I think I got something else. Testimony Church, Chapter 2. See, I've just got in there. I think I, I, I didn't read, I don't want to read the whole thing because it's a lot. I, I think I highlighted some portions of it. Let me get to my highlighted part. Hey, can I say something? And yes, you... sir. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Michelle. No, I just had a quick question. I have written in my notes. 1053.4 to 1054.1, what was the actual, what preceded that from Spirit of Prophecy? Uh, probably manuscript releases, chapter eight, uh, volume eight. I need Thank to go back. You. I need, I make, I, I make sure I think that's what it was. But if not, you can go back and listen to it because uh, I got them here. Go ahead, Brother Tony. Yeah, bless the Sabbath, happy Sabbath to all. Holy Sabbath. Um, Holy Sabbath. Yes, Amen. Uh, you know when we talk about righteousness by faith, we know um, that Martin Luther brought that message of righteousness by faith. Now we and understand that righteousness by faith. That was the heart of the movement toward. Uh, Protestantism, righteousness by faith. So the question is, what's the difference between understanding righteousness by faith by Martin Luther and righteousness by faith brought to us through the 1888 Most Precious Message? And one of the things that was said, you may not, you may not read it, but the righteousness by faith 
through Jones and Wagner or through the most precious message. And they have Wagner said, this is, um, he, he equated to Martin Luther, but also is, it points out in light of the cleansing of the sanctuary, Martin Luther did not understand the movement of Christ going from the holy into the most holy. He had a righteousness by faith, yes. But the righteousness by faith that we're talking about, that we're proclaiming, is not new light, but is old light, but in light of something which is old light as well, which is Christ moving from the holy into the most holy. And that is righteousness by faith that we're coming from, the point of the cleansing of the sanctuary. And I don't know if that makes much sense or um, not, I don't want to seem like I'm trying to mislead anyone, but we are a people. And this church was built upon the cleansing of the sanctuary. They accepted mm -hmm. that truth before they even accepted the Sabbath truth. What? The uh, vice by faith? No, they accepted the cleansing of the sanctuary, meaning oh, yeah, Christ yeah. moved from yeah. holy yeah. to the most holy. The yes. church is built on that doctrine. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Before right. the Sabbath. You know, so this righteousness by faith that we're talking about, even though it just says righteousness by faith, I want to be clear, and I guess I need to be more clear as I go and present it or say it, that it's in light of the cleansing of the sanctuary. So we cannot, you know, so when you're thinking, hmm, talking about righteousness by faith, it's in light of the cleansing of the sanctuary. Now, she also states, and I think I'm going to read it next in a minute, not after I read this, she says she presented rights by faith 40 years prior to Jones and Wagner gave that rights by faith message. I'm going to read that to you in a minute. Yes, she did. She read her she presented it between her and her husband. She presented it where it didn't, she didn't have the words to articulate that message to the people. She, she didn't had say, it. Well, I'm right. just paraphrasing. I'm just right, paraphrasing. No, said, I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna read that because she didn't, she said that. And now, like we now I'm glad you're on, brother. So let me ask you this question. Now I asked that question and, and but you can answer it. Have you ever read anywhere with the, that that message was presented to them again after Jones and Wagner? Was it ever presented to the church as a whole again in any other conference? You ever, you ever read anything about that after 1888? Yeah, it was presented. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the message itself. No, I'm talking about as a whole. It never died. I, I mean, I don't know if, if I understand your question. Okay, let me, let me make the question. After 1888, when Jones and Wagner presented that message, did they ever again as a as a whole present it to the conference as a whole again after that 1888? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Was it yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You got you have those, you can go and read um um Robert Willie and Donald Short. They are the two nets that has brought this light to the forefront to the conference and all that oh yes it's oh yes it's that message is god oh yeah yes so, and now, that message i'm sorry that message no when i say that uh, what i'm saying is if, when, when you look when you go there that message has always been preached to the church i mean all from now to you know if you go preach it's, it's still it's the same message that rises by faith if i go preach the church it's rising by faith but i'm saying after john the wagner did it there was never there was never a time when they came again as a conference, as a conference. Mm -hmm. But they met every they met every five years or whatever three or yeah. five years yeah. that, that they was given as a whole. Because she said that yeah. after that, because after that they rejected it. God yes. moved on from that. Yes. So, now, I'm sorry. So let me read now this. What? Yeah. Okay. One thing, if you don't mind me saying, the message was rejected by the leadership, most of the leadership. You might have seen the leadership. Yeah, yeah. And it was rejected. Now, Jones, Wagner, 
and Sister White, they went and presented it to the nation, to the to the to the uh, people, because yeah, the sure. conference or the conference level, they stifled it, and it was going through with great power to the people, directly to the people, right? Because the leadership wouldn't present it to the people, so God had it to use them to present it to the people, and hearts were turned. And matter of fact, I mean, you can go and read about, I think I forgot the brother's name. They were even wanted to evangelize the way they were evangelizing. They wanted to put that in place to evangelize based off of this thing. They got so upset with Sister White, they exiled her to Australia. They wanted, they sent Jones and Wag different places. In other words, the conference broke up the trio. Jones, Wag, and Sister White. They all were sh broken up, sent different places. And Sister White was sent to Australia. And you can read in her writings, and she said, hey, this is not God's will. And I'm just paraphrasing. This is not the will of God. She went, and her mission was, excited, uh, was blessed. But she said, you have, uh, I forgot the word she used, but you have, uh, I forgot the word, when you're exiled. She was exiled out. And you, you can go in there, you can read records where um, it was stated that, that she was exiled. And uh, because of the fact, they now, the leadership, now wanted to get this message and present it the way they wanted to present it. They wanted to present it with their understanding. And it's the wrong, and the message that you hear now by righteousness by faith coming from the conference or coming and say, we've been preaching this message since 1888. It's not the truth because it's based off of their way of presenting it. It's not right. the spirit of God in it. Right. So and, that, that's, uh, yeah. that's my point. That's my point. That's why I say it wasn't presented to the comes in, it was supposed to take it to the world. And this is what she says it right here. Listen to the testimony of ministers, uh, chapter two, uh, page 91 and onwards. She said, the, the message of justification by faith, the Lord in his great mercy sent a most precious message to his people through Elder Wagner, Elders Wagner and Jones. This message was to bring more prominent before the world, to uplift the savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. It presented justification through faith in the surety. It invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ which is made manifest in obedience to all the commandments of God. Many had lost sight of Jesus. They, had, they needed to have their eyes directed to his divine person, his merits and his changes love for the human family. All power was given into his hands that he may dispense rich gifts unto men, imparting these priceless gifts of his own righteousness to the helpless human agent. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is a third angel's message which is to be proclaimed with a loud voice and attended with the outpouring of the spirit in a large measure. Testimony Minister 91, paragraph two. Now, one more thing here. Three, section, three selected message book three, chapter 25. Let me find this. I'm not gonna read all of it. Let me find the part that I highlighted. Then we're gonna open up. We're not gonna start the, uh, Midnight cry until the next Sabbath by God's grace, but we're going to open up for questions and comments, though. Justification and Christ's righteousness presented. Elder E.J. Wagner had the privilege granted him of speaking plainly and presenting his views upon justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law. This was no new light, but it was old light placed where it should be in the third angel's message. What is the burden of the people? John sees the people, he says. He is a patient of the saints. He ordained to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. This people John behold just before he sees the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Verse 14. Three selected message, 168 paragraph one. Let me, I think I had some other stuff highlighted. I got a question, if it's all right. Yes, yes sir. When you when it read that this is uh, not new light, but old light, uh, what's the last part with the three angels' message? 
Let me go back and find that. Second, here it is, here it is, here it is. Say so this was note uh, reading from uh, selecting selected message book three page one sixty seven and page one sixty eight paragraph one. Elder, Elder E.J. Wagner had this privilege granted him of speaking plainly and presenting his views upon justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law. This was no new light, but an old light place where it should be in the third angel's message. Okay. Now the question is uh, where it should be in the, three, in the third angel's message or what does that, what does that mean? He said that this was no new light, but it was old light placed where it should be in the third angel's message. What is the third right. angel's message? Revelation yes. 14. Okay. And then she says, sure. then she gives that the rights of my faith in Revelation right. 14 12. Yeah, I guess my question is, what is that, what is that saying as to righteousness by faith, where it needs to be or place in the three angels message or the third angels message? What does that mean? Okay, she asked the question. See, what is the burden of the of that message? John sees the people. He says, "Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus." So she said, "The message, the rise of my faith message, is place where it should be in the third angel message, which is the Revelation you, 14, 12. Do you kid is kid? Do we see the the cleansing of the sanctuary or the movement from the holy to the most holy in there? In 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 a uh, in a uh, in the three in the three angels message, yes. So so this old light, which is now placed in the message, right? No, always been placed in there. Yeah, always been there. Right. No, yeah, always been there, yes, absolutely. But it's placed now in the in the in the three angels' message. So I just wonder is that indicating that there is a difference between uh, what Martin Luther preached and taught to what we just read. Yeah, Martin, you know, remember is, is Martin, it, Martin Luther didn't even keep the Sabbath. So no. So that, that so so <laughs> so when we look at well, Revelation 14, 12. Now remember, Martin Luther didn't keep the Sabbath. John Hus and none of them. They kept it. They didn't keep the Sabbath. And uh, right. so, therefore, go ahead. No, no, I say you're right. They didn't keep the Sabbath. But again, the Advent of faith, the the movement was not built on the Sabbath. It was built on Christ moving from the holies to the most holies. Oh no, not true, not true. And I'm not Wait, what? No, hold on. But but now, brother Tony. Uh, now we're going to read this. Now I won't cover it tonight because it, uh, this got to do with the midnight cry and the loud cry. Remember, if if we think about, if we think of, matter of fact, let's just talk about this for a second. So when we look at, what would it, go ahead, Sister Michelle. No, I just wanted to point out just because I was reading on, up on this, leading up to today, but um, the very name of of God's people that he gave God's people um, as part of the, through the pioneers and, and through through the history of the Seventh-day Adventist church allows us to know the importance of the Sabbath. You know, our very name um, gives, gives, gives light and gives credence to the Seventh-day Sabbath. The fact that we're called seventh, he gave that name to um, the founders of our faith and as God's people. Well, yeah. let me. Do it. So here, here's what's here's what. Now, when I say this, the Spirit of Father says it. But when I say it, you can you can be able to see it. Everybody can be able to see it. Jesus, we know that the Bible teaches us in in, in Daniel eight fourteen that Jesus went from the holy place to the most holy place. Amen. In eighteen forty four. Yeah. Now. Was now was was they did they see where God was leading them? 
No. She said, the reason why Christ couldn't come is because we were not keeping the fourth commandment of the Decalogue. She said, that's what God was leading them. But he was proving the people, and we're going to cover that when we deal with the midnight cry. She said, but he was proving the people to see if they would follow him by faith into the most holy place, where the fourth commandment shone brighter than all the other commandments. So Christ did not come to cleanse of the earth because what Christ was really leading them was for him, for them to keep the, all the commandments of God, especially the, the fourth commandment, which is the seven day Sabbath. And she said, we could not enter into heaven. Not, yes. this, not, not by faith, but even now, until God has restored the fourth commandment in his rightful place. So she said, mm -hmm. although we couldn't see that God was leading us there, we finally, as we continue to study and study, we finally saw and God showed us and showed me that there, that's why, and that's when you see in early writing, she said, God saw the Ten Commandments. God showed the Ten Commandments, written on two tables of stone in the front and the back. And what did he say? Which one shone brighter than the other ones? The fourth commandment. So, but they yeah. could not see. So the whole movement, the whole movement was to bring the people back into right relationship with the Sabbath. Which yes. so and yes. so therefore, but she said they didn't see that at first. So when you if, if, if a person would read the read the great disappointment and won't continue to read on, and what you can find is that, brothers and sisters, is is great controversy, 1888 edition from starting from chapter 22 to chapter 25. Yeah. So, and we see how God was leading them. She said, we couldn't see that. And we saw how God was leading step by step. And the Sabbath was the point that God wanted to bring us to. But God taught them all the truths that needed to be observed. And so, but that's what he was leading to was because that no one could, and that's why she even states, and I, that states that, 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 Everybody who died under the third angel's message must have kept the Sabbath. But before yes, then, I, but before then, it was not the test. So, but go ahead. No, no, no I would say yes, amen. I agree with what was said, absolutely. But it still remains that the church was built off of um, the movement of the cleanse of the sanctuary. Actually, it, it was it was actually something else because you know the Millerite movement was the advent of Jesus returning. Right, which was what it was the advent of Jesus returning, and when yeah. he didn't return, that was the prominent. That was the midnight cry. That was the sounding of a one of the things of the midnight cry that Jesus <laughs> was returning to the earth. Right. And they did, and as we know, and it started, yeah, I mean, fully blown in, in 1831. It started when Millerite, when yep. Miller started reading it, I think it was 1819. He started studying. Right up together. Right up together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's <laughs> why it was way back before he stopped presenting the message. Hold on for a brother. Tony. Let me say that those who know history, who study history in school, everybody in the War of 1812, right? Amen. So that's the war of William Miller fought in the War of 1812. So go ahead, Brother Tony. Yeah, so the movement started with the advent calling for Christ returning. And that cry went around the world in different yep. places of the world. Yep. And and uh and of of course the great disappointment the great disappointment when Christ did not return to the earth. Because like we read in Revelation chapter 10, it was sweet going down, yep. but it turned bitter into the stomach. But, but what, go what back and prophesy again. But what was the purpose of that? What was the purpose of that? What was the purpose of that great disappointment? Do you remember what she said about the Bible teaching and what she said about that? And what was she said? It was to prove to people whether they would follow God or not. Amen. She's a gospel Amen. that man. And you know, and so in this, now Brother Tony, I'm gonna to say something, but it's not directed towards you, but it may hit you. Uh, not, not this right here. So brothers and sisters, we see that since the 1844 message was being preached, 
that those was what? Was they seven Adventists or Adventists? Adventists. Why are we calling ourselves Adventists? They were not us. We are seven day Adventists. Now, here we go. Here we go. Praise Brother God. Tony, Brother Tony, this is what you said. Now, this, this is going to come close to home as we come to a close. And the next time, Lord will, I won't present this on, 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 on preparation day because of the fact that a lot of people won't, hit, won't be on preparation day. But I present the midnight cry by God's grace uh, 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 next time, but the Lord's will. So now, if we, know, if we say, that the church have rejected the rights of our faith and teaching another rights of our faith. And we're not teaching, and they're not teaching what God would have them to teach. Then what are we doing? What are we doing? Now, is it easier for us to go worship with the people on Sunday? Or is it easy for us to go worship with our people on the Sabbath and they're not teaching the message? So if we, got, if we got two people, groups of people, not teaching the message God gave them and not teaching the message that God gave them, where should we be? That's a question that don't want anyone else. But the thing it is, brother, you have to let the wheat and the tares grow up together. And because righteousness, the message that is presenting, that's presented, is so close to the truth. Just like when Elijah came and said, choose ye between God or Baal. The people were so indoctrinated into their style of false worship that they could no longer tell the difference between the two. It's their fault. But they could not no longer tell the difference between the two. And they didn't answer him a word. And it took a prophet, God's prophet, to point it out. And just like we're here now, it's going to take God's prophet, Sister White, the message itself to spread that light. And it's not a gotcha. It's for us to address that we have it as a corporate body haven't accepted that message. And it's not to put the blame on anyone that didn't accept it because I perhaps and probably was walking in that. What was I what was I given? So I'm not looking at they were wrong. Yeah they were. But my thing is let the light so shine in among and you know that's that's just where I'm at with it. Right, I understand. So I see your hand, Sister Michelle, but let me say this. Brother and sister, I'm talking, Brother Tony mentioned it, which you can found in Matthew 13, wheat and tares. Now, he said, let the wheat and tares go together. In other words, we don't know, we don't know who's a wheat and who's a tear. So we don't start kicking people out of the church. It's not our job. Our job is to pre, pre, present present truth. So now, if you, when you look at, when you look at from Genesis to the Revelation, Jesus has always had the prophets or the priests, whenever the leadership was in apostasy, Jesus, the people would go war and they would not fellowship with them, they would go war and tell them. They would go war and tell them. Because matter of fact, he told Jeremiah, go stand at the gate. When they come out, go stand at the gate, the gate and proclaim my law. So, what in the spirit of prophecy talks about that. Now, we're not telling anyone where to worship, not to worship. We're saying that if the truth is, I, I don't know why, I don't know why we think that because we are seven day Adventists, we got to go listen to error. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't, Amen. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I mean, if we're going to go to Sunday church, maybe we are going over there. Maybe that's why we stay in that situation. But what I'm saying, brother, sister, error is error. And the spirit of prophecy says, Error is, the Bible teaches, error is never harmless. It's never harmless. It may not affect you, but by you being, not, I'm not talking to you, Brother Tony, but by us being in a situation where God has not, God has told us to come from among them, 
And how and Paul said, and Paul said, those brethren, we read in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 11 through 14 through 15. He said, those who walk contrary to that epistle, he wasn't talking about the, the world. So though he's the other brethren who's walking contrary to what do we teach, have nothing to do with them. No, they're not your enemy. I have no fellowship with them. But 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 sometimes we think that we can make a different influence. And so, and so therefore, is it better to proclaim outside the door or inside the door? Sister, now if, if they ask you to speak, you go there and speak and leave. But anyway, Sister Michelle, then we're going to come to a close and we'll pick this up next time, the Lord's will. Sister Michelle. No, I, I was just going to add what was said this morning about, um, you know, if, if we were to, and if we weren't to, if God didn't intend for us to come out of Babylon, and if that wasn't part of the loud cry to come out of Babylon. Now remember the church is uh, not Babylon. Then, not, the church is not Babylon, so make sure you make a distinction. Right. But the point I'm making is apostasy, you know, in terms of all of the harlot churches, whether it be I'm going to um, church, the church. Well, I'm, when I say harlots, I'm meaning and, and I should say harlots and then the apostate Protestant churches, well, um, whether not, it be. Hold on for a minute. Seventh Day Church, not apostate Protestantism. So you got to rightly explain it. The church is in apostasy. That's different than apostate Protestantism. And that's, that's a distinction. That's two different right. things. Okay. So the, the, our church is right. well, in the deep apostasy. You no, no doubt about it. Been in, been there for years. But if we are bearing false witness, yes. if we stay under that error, whether it be um, apostate Protestantism, whether it be um, being in a uh, in Babylon, whether it be um, being under uh, this error within our own Seventh Day Adventist churches, where there's error being you know, where that are not preaching the the three angels message, the last the warning message. So, you know, to say that the wheat the, when the when the Bible speaks of the wheat and the tares growing together, that's just meaning that you know you may have people that come um, that may or may not be walking in the level of truths. Um, or, you know, the spirit of prophecy speaks of that Satan will always plant people in churches where the truth is being proclaimed, but you continue on proclaiming the truth, but that, that, that's not the same as someone being in under error in a, in a church where the truth isn't being proclaimed and then saying that that's wheat and tares. There's no... Yeah. That God would never call us to be under error. Right. So let me let me just simple, let me just make it a little plainer what you're saying. And what you're saying is correct. The weed and tares is for is 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 the people in the congregation. All right. That's the weed and tares. But anytime you go you go from the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy, any anywhere I give you all Bible all day all day long, all day and all night. Anytime the leadership, the, the ministers, is not preaching present truth in the message for this time we're living in, why do you think God called Noah out? Why do you think he called Lot out? Why do you think he called Abraham out? Why do you think he called Elijah out? Why do you think he talked about Samuel? Why do you think he talked about Elijah, Peter, James, and John, the disciples, and Paul? Why didn't Paul stand Praise in the prayer God. team? Why you talking about what the general Amen. think? Why why you think the spirit of prophecy said in 1901 that she can no longer say that comfort is the voice of God? Why do you think she always admonished the leadership? Why do you think Isaiah 56 said that the leaders that calls these people to air? Why do you think Jesus says, I see the sheep on a hill with no shepherd? The Bible has always, it's not the people that is causing the people to err, it's the leadership that causing people to err. And we dare, and, and uh, some Amen. of the, 
I'm ready to predate some of us. But some of us know uh, 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 Reverend Ike, right? Y'all remember Reverend Ike, Brother Roy? Is he still on, Brother Roy? You yeah, still on? yeah, I remember yeah. Reverend Ike. You won't go listen to him as a Seventh-day Adventist? I hope not. No. Yeah. And we won't go listen to T.D. Jakes? I hope not. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Long, I hope not. Not after we have known what the truth is. Well, he ain't no longer here. And, and we won't go listen to Benny Hinn and 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 Joel Osteen and uh, what's the other female name? I don't care. They can shoot me up there. George Myers and George Myers. Listen, they're not preaching a message. Mm -mm. Amen. So, but if we're, so we're not preaching a message. message. What are we doing? I mean, I, I don't get that. I, you do not have carte blanche, brothers and sisters. You do not have a pass because your name is written under seven events. You don't have a pass. You don't have an excuse. Not to, matter of fact, it is more. It is more of a higher calling that you are seven events that you should be preaching God's message. So, hey, praise God. So when we think that we can go in that environment and change something, we are to go in there and tell the people the truth, and we are to tell the leadership the truth. But if they refuse to hear it, God said, leave them alone. Spirit of prophecy said, you know what Spirit of prophecy tell us? And nothing to do with them. That when the church, when our church, when our brother refused to hear the truth, we, we have to leave them alone and go and give it to the world. Amen. Why do you think God dealt with Israel like he did? Why do you, why you think Jesus, you know, did you know Jesus didn't give the, did you know the Pharisees and Sadducees did not give Jesus tithes and offerings? Did you know that? And did you not know that Jesus didn't give them any tithes and offers either? <laughs> now, now, who was in error? Jesus or them? Them. Not about the tithes and offers, but the, the gospel. Amen. God is trying to, matter of fact, we don't, we, we, we have failed, I see your hand, we have failed to realize that we are under the order of maturity, the priesthood, not under Aaron. That's right. We are, we, are, we are under a continuation priesthood. The priesthood that in it was the Aaron, the Levite, the biblical priesthood in it when the sanctuary served in it. There were no more priests and prelates. So, brothers and sisters, God is calling us to cry out loud and spare not. He is calling us to stand. We got to stop. It's interesting that we would, would you let anybody come in your house and do anything they want to do because they're your yeah. son, daughter, mother, father, whatever? No. No. So what, and you know what you know you know what Phinehas done when 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 the Balaam got the children to sin and he brought that girl that when when uh, 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 Zimri brought that and Zimri was a leader of the people he was one of the chief priests mm -hmm. he brought that woman a Midianite harlot into the midst of the children of camp of Israel and guess what is guess what happened Phinehas. <laughs> We would have called, we would have said, oh, you're wrong. You killed the servant of God. Phinehas took the javelin, and I'm not saying if you're taking no javelin, kill nobody. I'm going to make sure you get that straight. All of what I'm saying, he took the javelin because he had a cause for God and stuck the javelin between the, the, the person that was in apostasy and the person that represented the harlot. And matter of fact, one day I'm going to tell you what both of their names mean. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, we see that and God told Moses and Aaron and all the rest of them and Joshua, Phinehas loves me. He will be forever mentioned and remember of what he done because he has a zeal after my own righteousness. He didn't go along with the crowd because they was all Jews. Mm. That's and right. They, and, they, and they brought, that wasn't done outside the camp, brothers and sisters. This was brought right into the camp. We got to stop. We got to stop looking at us and say, oh, because you're seven day minutes, it's, it's, you can do what you want to do. No, you can't. It's, it's, it's amazing to me how we quick to call the sins of Rome out, but we don't even call our own sins out in that church. What is wrong with us? <laughs> Amen. But because we're seven day minutes, we can, it is, we're held to a higher standard than they are. Wow. And if you think it's okay to go listen to error in our church, then it's no different. You go listen to error in somebody else's church. 
That's right. Amen. No, that's not seven day minutes. It's no different, brother. The truth is truth. And don't listen to the old praising man. Uh, Juliana said the truth is truth is not the truth. That's foolishness. <laughs> that's right. The truth is truth, brother. The word is truth. And we all have been in the same Bible, the King James Version Bible. But we, but we, but the spirit of prophecy, because we teach in tradition of men, brother and sister, I know. Listen, you know what? You know the problem is, many of us don't know what the church is. That's right. We, many of us don't know who's working with God, who's working against God. How can we tell? I don't care what you're doing in your lifestyle. Your, your lifestyle should be right as the Word of God is right. And I don't care what you've done. God is not caring about what you've done yesterday. He's caring about what you're doing now, now, Amen. now, now. So Amen. you know what? He's saying to us. Me, you, and everyone else, feed my sheep. Amen. Feed, my lamb, feed my sheep. And what, how can we feed his lamb, his sheep, lamb and sheep? Mm -hmm. It's by giving them present truth. Meat in due season. Meat, mm -hmm. and meat in due season means present truth. So, brothers and sisters, if we are in those congregations, we must tell the people. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I say this, and I'm going to shut up this, Sister Michelle, and we're going to close out. Brothers and sisters, who get the chance? Who you get that? You know what? You know you know, you know, you know what? You know what that has, you know what that has caused us by allowing our ministers to preach and, and continue to pan them. And not to preach our men. We are, you know, we are we are actually paying a hireling. Because mm. he care if he care for the sheep, they'll be preaching the three angels' message. That's right. Amen. But if we say, oh, Pastor, no, no, no. We're not giving no more child until you preach the message. Either he's going to get converted or he's going to leave. <laughs> amen. Look, look. I got an amen. That's all I need. That one amen. Amen. Right amen. <laughs> so, brother, you're telling us, we got to, listen, how long, what are we doing? The power is in the people's hand through prayer. We allow our leadership to just teach us the leaders in it. That's why the Bible says we like to go to church and toss to and fro. We become dumb when we come to church. But you know what they say? They say, so where you want to go. <laughs> so, brother, sister, uh, sister Michelle, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to comment to the point about um, being, um, mm -hmm. we're not supposed to have partnership with, do anything in partnership with the devil. Mm -hmm. um, when John, John Kellogg, um, and he's deceased, so it's okay to say his full name, but he was, um, you know, very much a devout Seventh-day Adventist, and he got off into pantheism, mm. and um, Ellen G. White warned him and spoke to him and, um, you know, gave him, gave, gave him um, light, gave, explained that what the truth what was and that he was in error, but <laughs> and you know what, brother and sister, if you don't know who John Kellogg is, go into your cupboard out the seven and open that cabinet up and you see those cornflakes. That's who John Kellogg is. That's who he is. That's that's that, that's that's all. And as a matter of fact, if you want to know who what post is, post is a work for John Kellogg, was a seven day business, and he's a 30 feet away from the, from the uh, uh, cornflakes, and he's, hey, can I take these and make me a cereal? He said, yeah. And so that's how Post came about. And I've been to John Kellogg. I've been to where they make the cornflakes in, in Battle Creek, Michigan, brother and sister. But you know what? Spirit of Prophet said that he was so smart that he was, she was the smartest man. He was the smartest man that he ever seen. His mind was so sharp, but he allowed that mind to be controlled by the devil. And, and brother MK. Yes, he, he also wrote the foreword in the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. He read the foreword in that book. It's powerful. He was a, he was a doctor. She said he had a, a God had given him a mind like no other mind. And he, it, it was only to bring us to a more understanding of the sanctuary message and the, and, and the health message. God been trying Amen. to use us all of us. God was not trying to give Ellen Sister White everything so she can feed us. God wanted to use the whole church. We're all members. But we have all Praise got that's power to the pastor and, the, and the elders, and they're going astray. They're not feeding God's people. Like I said, I didn't matter of fact, I think I said that, I don't know if I said it, I probably said it in Virginia last Sabbath, but I said it again if I didn't say it. Those people 
in, in Southeastern Conference in Florida who allowed that first day person to come in and, 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 and teach that foolishness and sing that foolishness and say, it doesn't matter what day the Sabbath is on and we can, we can worship Sabbath on Monday, every one of them should be fired. Every pastor elder in that conference, if they ain't doing nothing about it, should be fired. And if the conference president, Ted Wilson ain't doing nothing about it, he should be fired. That's the apostasy in God's church. We are causing God's people to be lost. And we're standing around, oh, let the wheat and tears, oh, they're my brothers. No, they're not your brother and sister. They're an apostasy. They are causing people to be lost. You should have saw the church. I got the video. You want to see it? I will send it to you. And I'm, matter of fact, I'm not even stressing the far enough what, you, what I'm seeing. You, you will not believe it, brothers, until you see it for yourself. Right in our own churches, down there with a Sunday person rapping and rebuking the church and saying, you don't have to keep the Sabbath, seven-day Sabbath. You can keep it on Monday. You can keep it in. I've got God just like you've got God. You can't tell me nothing. And all the church, whether they were seven-day minutes or not, it was seven-day minutes general conference, it was, uh, 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 people, and they all might not have been seven-day minutes, but they always, yay, yay, saying, that's an abomination. That was worse than the children of Israel around a golden calf. They was all naked. And when I say they was naked, they wasn't naked physical, but they were naked spiritual brothers and sisters. And the devil probably was, the devil was probably surprised of his own success. Listen, listen, I don't care what they gonna do to me. They ain't got a heaven and hell to put me in. Matter of fact, let them come talk to me. And then that is time, brothers and sisters, for us to cry loud and spare not. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the national son of law for persecution to come and God and we be persecuted? Then we go, oh Lord, save it, Lord. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. She said the very devout leadership who is causing God's people to sin will turn you in and betray the brethren and the sisters in the faith. She said the very ones, the very ones. Now, I could be one of those. But right now, I'm not. So, brothers and Praise sisters, God. by the grace of God, and it always been the case where the leadership of always calls God, why we don't see this and take notice? Why we take notice more of the self-supporting ministries than we take notice of the people that say they're God's people? And then when the leadership says, oh, don't really listen to that self-supporting uh, over there. Uh, they're not in the truth. They're not in the church. Well, you know what? But well, they're not in the boat. Let me ask you, which boat do you want to get on? The one that's saved driving or the one that's God is driving? Because I tell you, the one that's saved driving has a little more, a lot more people than the one that God is driving. So if they tell you, hey, don't go teach, you know what? Don't go listen to those people preach your present truth. And I'm not saying every self-supporting ministry is doing that because some of us self-supporting ministries is off the mark as well. God has one church, brother. So that church is seven-day been a church. Now, you may be by name, and, and Revelation talks about that, that you have a name, but you are dead. So, brothers and sisters, it, 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 it may be just more of a, of a witness that we're not there. If we go there and proclaim the message and say, you know what, why do you just come here when you preach the message then we don't see no other Sabbath? Well, because you know what? And, you, you know, everybody in, in temp, if anybody, if I'm wrong, please tell me now, and I'm going to bring this to an end. If they listen to me, if they, you know why we on Zoom? You know why we start another place of worship? Because we wasn't getting the present truth in our own churches. It was not because we didn't like the people. We love the people. We are people. Some bald heads, some got hair, some fat, some skinny, some ugly, some white, some be, all kind. But we all have present truth, brothers and sisters. So it's not like that we want to just come in because you had a better car or whatever, a better house. No. It because we was not being fed. We were not hearing present truth. We was reading what the spirit of the problem Bible says, but we were not seeing it in where we are. So you know what? If you keep giving a baby milk, they're not going to grow. They're going to soon die. So it's some and God liking a little child, a baby, to the church. You start off feeding the milk, and then at some point, you give them meat. And then at some point, you give them strong meat, brother and sister. We are needing strong meat, the Bible says, and we must do so. We must cry loud and spare not. It ain't the people. If the leadership would do right, the people will follow. Always been the case. But she said it won't, they won't do it. They said preach unto a smooth thing. And, you know, we got to the point now, 
I'm afraid that the people would, if the pastor would start preaching President Truth, the people may get mad because, you know, when we preach in President Truth, a lot of places we can't go, we go, like going, we can't go no more. Like the movies, theater, listen to certain music, watch certain things on TV. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear it. We oh, can't eat certain things, can't dress a certain way. We're, we're, we're in trouble, brothers and sisters. We're in serious trouble. And you know what? You, I ain't been to a, certain, a Sunday church since I think since the last time I spoke one, I can't remember. I spoke in one. Might have been, might have, I might have been one since then. But you know what? Look at the way our sisters, sisters dress. Look at the way we dress in our churches. We come to church like we're going outside. We're like we're going to Walmart. We're not, we're not dressing. We don't. She said, when we go to church, we should have a special attire just for church. And you, and, and you used to be, not no more. When you go to Walmart, you used to work, not no more. It used to be they had a certain attire. And if you didn't have the right attire on, and they were, they were, they used to uh, 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 provide you in a certain attire. So you didn't have no excuse. But you came to work without your uniform on. No, no, you must have clocked, you might have clocked in before we saw you. Then you got to clock out. You know what? Without the right attire, brother and sister, you not you won't be like Walmart. You get you get by the manager, you clock in. No, no, no. And when Christ comes, you ain't got the wedding going on that he has provided for each one of us. I don't care what your name is. You ain't gonna make we not I'm, we not gonna make it. So, brothers and sisters, let's take that righteousness by faith message that God gave us, that righteousness by faith garment, and let us word, let us word, and let us proclaim that message to God and say, look, cry loud, spare not, first in our own lives, amen, and then to the church, and then to the world. And now, brothers and sisters, I'm thinking we're so far gone, it is time for us to go give it to the message to the world. But, hey. Brothers and sisters, any comments or questions before we close? And I, and I, I'm not gonna, you know what, matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 12, the disciples said to Jesus, Did you not know that you offended the Pharisees by what you said? And you know, when you read the Zion page 3, 398, I think it is. Do you know what? They want the disciples wanted Jesus to apologize to the Pharisees for what he has said. And he said, no, I will not. He said, let lead them alone. The blind, they blind leading the blind. They both fall in the ditch because they thought Jesus was too hard on them. But, so, but brother and sister, sometimes we need hard words spoken to us because sometimes we're stiff naked. Amen. And you know what? I get it all the time because God knows and I need to be dealt with. So when I'm speaking like this, I'm talking to myself first. Because I know the devil would, and the devil, like Jesus told to Peter, the devil would desire to sift you, Peter. He, the devil is designed to sift each one of us. I don't care what, I don't care what you believe or who you worship with. The devil is designed to kill each and every one of us to so to be lost. The demons hate each other. Amen. Brothers and sisters. So can we get anyone, anybody got in, can we get, can we get anyone that closes out a prayer? Any volunteers that close in prayer? You already volunteered me earlier. Oh, that's man. Right, Brother, Brother Roy, that's why right. I was just, I was thinking of it before I said, I think Brother Roy. Yeah, so Brother Roy, <laughs> any, any testimonies, any prayer requests before we close? I have a prayer request. Go ahead, Brother. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, know, I, know, I know that we said in the end times it's going to be Earthquakes and rumors of wars. I understand people, people on the people alive from under the ground and the Turkey and Syria. So let's pray that for the, you know for that they can be you know pray, pray for the people that are undergoing from the earthquake. Twenty some thousand people. Twenty some thousand people still counted. I think it was twenty four a while ago. Twenty four thousand. They were saying something. <laughs> They still put people out, so praise God. I, I, you know that. They're still looking because if you got people that still three or four days later still on that ground that's alive, I hope they get them because that's one of the uh, Brother Kim, they said earlier, said there was a woman and her daughter been on there four days and they got out while they go alive, both of them. 
Yeah, I saw that too. So thank you. I was like, good. I'm glad it did. Good job. That's right. I'm glad it did. Brother Stitcher, don't forget those things over there. It's coming to you soon. Believe you me. And uh, but so we see these things. We see the judgments in the land, brother and sisters. We need to make sure. We need to make sure, brother and sisters, that our calling election is sure. Amen. And those we can tell them about the second coming of Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, but tell, them, tell them what they need to do. So, um, anyone else? Any other prayer requests? This is yeah. not a prayer request, but uh, um, just want to give our praise that uh, we were able to participate in uh, communion service and foot washing today. Yeah. And um, definitely, this is, was a renewal and um, revival. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for it. Amen. Praise God. Man, we probably need to do that one day when we come together and to do push Washington. All right, brothers and sisters, anyone else? Any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the prayer request that we mentioned during Sabbath service this morning to be remembered. And All right. Okay. Daniel, was it Daniel? Yeah. And yeah. also, yeah, Daniel, you know, you know, sister Miss Mildred, okay. my, brother, my nephew Michael, I pray for him. Yeah. Anyone else? Brother, All the elders that we've actually been praying for because they keep asking me for prayer. I said, I'll put y'all on the prayer list. Amen. I can't remember them all. <laughs> so God knows them. So God, God knows who they are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, We'll pray with Crescent Testament. We'll pray with Crescent. Any, anybody got any questions before we close? Or we pause, I should say, until next, until next preparation day. Okay. I had a I had a comment, but for whatever reason, it, 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 it had escaped me. But I will say this. Um, I'm thankful for what we've heard and read and I had not, I had searched and searched um, for, you know, just to see what was in spirit of prophecy of, on righteousness by faith and to learn through these studies that it was not new light. I, for me, that's a, a big revelation from the standpoint of, Amen. you know, God, God's word you know, there's nothing new under the sun and God's, God's word is in perfect harmony with itself. So um, oftentimes the spirit of prophecy also speaks of where anytime you see those that may come and try to present something as new light, um, not to say that there aren't instances of new light coming into the church because there are instances of that, but from the standpoint of taking something that may be old light and make presenting it as new light, the um, spirit of prophecy does speak of that as being, um, you know, in error that, that, that the devil will try to also dwelling on topics that aren't intended for us to necessarily understand i'm not i'm not speak saying that about righteousness by faith by no means but the by the spirit of prophecy does speak about um being careful when there's a lot of attention given to a certain subject that overshadows the what the loud cry in the last day message for god's people and and that's what the devil hates so praise god for Un, um, just reminding us all that the, the Sabbath and righteousness by faith and the, the three angels message, this last day warning message is it, it's it's imperative that it be shared and proclaimed, uh, yeah. so that so that people can can move and and make the right decisions and God can prick these hearts and minds and Jesus can come back. I mean, yeah. we're holding up, we're holding up the end of the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anyone else, brothers and sisters, as we come to a close? Anyone else? Anyone? Okay, if not, 
Now we'll sing our song, Now the Day is Over by Brother Ross. Amen. <clears throat> Hymn number, hymn number 35, now the day is over. Now the day is over. Night is drawing nigh. Shadows of the evening steal across the sky. Father, give the weary come and sweetly pose. Without tenderest blessings, may I lift close through the long night watches. May the angels spread their wings above me, watching on my bed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before Brother Roy pray, brothers, I want to see all of us in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Phone call or Zoom. I want, and I want to be there, and I know you want to be there. So, brothers, so we must help each other. Be there. Amen. 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 Now, Brother Roy would close us out, sap it out with prayer, please. Amen. Let us pray. Now, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. He said, our feet will stand within that gate, so we will do so. Let us be glad about what has taken place here this, this on this evening, this afternoon, that our Father has allowed us to hear his word, heavenly word being spoken in and through by his messenger, the servant. Help us to be received, being willing to receive and heed what he's saying here. Our hearts should have burned within because we heard a rhema word, the word from on high is blessed and help us to take these words with us and use them, Father, as not only to hear it, but do it as well and tell others about the goodness of the Lord and what he can and will do if you will allow him. So whosoever will, the word said, let him come, come to the fountain and be filled up. And we thank you, Father, that you allowed our hearts to burn within. We're hearing such an awesome word. Yeah. So help us to, as we leave, Father, help us to continue to carry these things with us that we've heard this on this afternoon. We thank you for it, Father. Oh, we ought to be glad that you've allowed us this opportunity, this privilege to be here amongst the living and hear your word. And thank you, Father, for the man serving that you play so graciously in our midst, and we pray for him, Father, for his strength and direction. And we pray for all those, like the other bishops that's on the, the Zoom, that they continue to be strengthened, and all of us to be lifted up in, unto thy name. And we thank you, Father, for such a day as the day has been. It's been blessed all day. And we pray, Father, if there's any sick in our midst, that you bless them with their healing, and give them strength, Father, to just hold on until the change comes. And all those that ask for prayer, you know, spoken prayer requests, Father, we are praying for Brother Ken, for the discernment, for wisdom. We are praying also for Brother Greg and his wife, Deborah, that they can have a stronger walk with thee and a greater ministry for those that they may come in contact with. Brother Brother Wayne and Walter, that they continue down the road that they're on, to, and they're doing a lot of things for the Lord that helps keep the people of God. And we thank you for their lives. We're praying, Father, also for Sister Mary, Sister Michelle, that they continue to be helpers in this ministry, helping lead people to Jesus. That's what it's all about. And bless those, Father, that ask for prayer, as we were praying for them to in the Sabbath, uh, on Sabbath, Sabbath uh, lesson earlier today. We're still praying for Brother uh, Daniel, nephew, Father, and nephew Michael. We pray for all those, Father, that need to be healed, touched, and delivered. And make sure, Father, that you let them know that they need to be born again. And we thank you. And as we leave this place, Father, we're asking you to not leave our presence, but be with us, Father, all the way. Thank you, Father, for this day. And all that has been said and done here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
You have a good week. Uh, I'm blessed. I've enjoyed you all.